Hi, I'm George, and in this Photoshop Elements Face Swap video, we'll be doing this combined photo, and we'll be starting with this picture right here and adding in this face right over here. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click on that like button. Don't forget to click on share as well and also subscribe. When you subscribe, hit that bell notification icon to get notifications of my new videos. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's get to it. Okay, we'll be using this base photo as our face swap picture. And this will be the same for any time you're gonna be doing a face swap. You'll have a base photo, which is most of your image, and then be placing a face in from a different image. Now the easy way to do this is to cut a hole in your base image and then put your new face in behind. It makes it just easier to blend the edges. The other way, of course, is to put your new face on top of your base image. And which method you choose will depend upon the image. I'll be using the cutting the hole technique because we have this hair right here and the face is in behind that hair. And it's also in behind this little bit of the jacket right down here. So putting the face in behind makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll zoom in on this image. There we go, right on the face. And we'll make a basic selection around the face. So I'll just grab my tool over here. Any of the lasso tools will be fine. On this one, you can use the polygonal or the regular lasso tool. Either one should be okay. I'll use the regular lasso tool and I'll just make a selection just right up next to where that hair is. I'm gonna to try to stay out of the hair just a pretty close next to that. And we'll just go clear around like this. There we go. And up around this side, stay outside of the face. and get some hair, you can come back in over the hair. And again, staying just inside. Now that selects this area. What we want is the outside selected. So we need to invert the selection. Go up to select, come down to inverse right here. And now the outside area is selected and this is not selected. Now come down here to refine edge. If you don't see it down here, if you're using an earlier version, this is Photoshop Elements 2020. Some earlier versions won't have the button down here. You'll find it up under Select and right there. And this will work clear back to version 13 of Photoshop Elements. Okay, grab a fine edge. I almost always use the overlay. It just is really easy to see. Nice bright red. You can see right there, there is the size of that cursor. And that's right over here. It's a bit large, I think, in this case. I'm going to bring this down to... 20, I'll just type that in. That's a better size. You don't want to go too large on this. And now I'll simply paint right on top of that line that separates the mask from the background image. Now what we're doing here, we're telling Photoshop Elements to go back and re-examine that edge. It then takes a closer look and tries to find a much better selection on that edge. So we're not actually painting in a new selection. We're just telling Photoshop Elements to re-examine it and do the best job that it can. It then figures that all out with its fancy math that it has. Okay, we'll just complete this. Notice I'm doing little strokes. That seems to work best. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a little bit of hairs right there. I'll just come into those a bit more. I think we're fine along that edge. Maybe a little bit more right in here. Looks good. Now if it bleeds in, you can see where the red is bleeding into the area down here that it really doesn't need to be in. You can erase that by using this tool. This just reverses that. It restores it to the original. And I'll come in just a little bit right like that. And then let's try getting that edge again right in there and see if we get a little better edge. Okay, that's about as good as I can get right here. I think that'll be okay. I'm using the scroll wheel on the mouse right now to go up and down a little bit. Edge looks good along here, it looks fine. The edge looks fine over here. I think we're okay there. And it looks good up around here. Okay, so come over here where it says Output to. Open that up and come down to New Layer with Layer Mask and choose OK. And what that gives us, notice how it hides the background? That gives us that layer with the hole cut out where the face is. And that's perfect. Okay, now we have that one. Let's go ahead and hide that and show our background again. I'm going to back out just a little bit here. Let's go Fit Screen first. And back over here to the Photo Bin. And if you have your image already open, right down here, you can work from the photo bin. I have links for both of these on my website. You'll find a special page just for working with this particular video. 
and that has links to these two photos on it, plus the finished Photoshop Elements file as well. I'm just going to grab the second image down here and just drag it straight onto my image, and that'll bring it in. Notice how this is a lot larger than the other image. So I'll have to make this smaller to make it fit. I'll just grab the upper right hand corner and I'll drag down quite a ways until it's getting a lot closer. And somewhere in here, you know, that's going to be pretty close. It's not going to be exact, this will be pretty close. Now we have this set up, put it right here. We can then move in and try to do a better job on the size. So I'll grab the zoom tool, let's just click in. That's pretty good. Now you find that people's basic facial features are pretty close as far as where their positioning goes. The space between the eyes is usually about the same size as the eyes themselves. Distance between the eyes and the corners of the mouth will be pretty close on most people. Age will make a difference, you know, other things will make a difference, things can be confusing, but this will be pretty close. So if we use these points, it can help us get pretty close to the right size. We may need to do a little bit of a visual adjustment after that. You can also go by the corners of the eyes right in here. Now notice in here you can kind of see where the eyeball is, even though the eyes are closed, you can kind of see where that is. And we can guess right about where the middle of the eye would be. I'll pull a guideline down here and put it right about where the middle of that eye should be. Right about in here looks like, kind of in there. I'm looking at just kind of the round area here. I think it's right about in here. Just a little bit above where the tear ducts are being. See the same thing over here. Middle of the eye is just a little bit above where the tear ducts are. And here's our tear ducts right down there. Okay, I'll also pull a guideline down for the corners of the mouth. Now her, her face is tilted a little bit, so the corners are at different spots. So I'll find a line right in between those two, kind of right here. Somewhere around here and around here will be pretty close for us. So we can now bring this image down. And it looks like, of course, we're tilted. Her eyes are kind of at the wrong angle. So come just outside. Let me see if I can see that better. Right there, just outside of this little kind of a bent arrow. I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate the image around until I get her eyes to line up on that line. Because so I think the other person is pretty well straight on. And that looks pretty good right there. Notice how we're a little high right down here. So the image is a little bit small. I'll pull this up just a bit and let's see how we do. Okay, corners of the mouth are pretty close. In the middle of the eye is pretty close. This should be pretty close to the same size now over here. I'll click on the green check mark. And let's just double check that. I'll put this right here. Let's change the opacity down to 50 so I can see through. And let's just line up, I'll line up those tear ducts now. Right about there, it looks like the mouths line up, the eyes line up pretty well, the eyebrows are lining up. So I think that's about the right size for this image. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back up to 100%. Now, we can bring back in our top layer here, and that's the one where her face is in behind, and that looks pretty good. Let's just zoom out, I'll go back to fit screen, and then get rid of those guides, view and clear guides. Okay, at this point, we can eyeball it a little bit. I think that her face is a little bit large, maybe, on this view. It feels just a little large, so I'll pull the corner down. You always have to do a little bit of a visual adjustment so it feels right. And that looks a bit better, a bit more space down around here. Now part of the problem, and this you always find problems when you're working with different photographs, is that in this one she is looking straight at us. In the other image, which is right here, she's looking down and her head is tilted forward a little bit. So the position of the head is a little bit different in both pictures and you have to take that into account. So if she's looking straight forward, the features need to be a little bit higher up in the picture than on the version where she's looking down. Okay, I think right around in here looks pretty good. Now we just need to fix any problems that we see. We should be okay on the hair on the left hand side. We have a little bit of the fur from our foreground person here showing that's okay. Over here, there's a little bit of hair on this side. Now she's also a blonde, but it's a darker blonde. So this bit of hair right here is the wrong color to match the image. We need to fix that. And I'm gonna pull her just a little bit over, I think. Just kind of moving around. I'm going to use the arrow keys, the cursor keys on the keyboard, and get a better just small adjustments in there until it looks natural. I think right about there looks pretty good. Okay, so two things to fix, the hair and up here. For the hair, let's copy that out and make a new layer with just that piece of hair on it. 
So for that, I'm going to hide that foreground. Let's zoom in. You can see there's that bit of hair. Instead of right here, I want to have just a bit of this. So I'll grab my polygonal lasso tool this time, a little bit more controllable. And I'll start up here in the fur hat. And I'll come right down, right inside that shadow. Right there, just come right along that edge. Luckily, the hair really isn't real feathery in here or anything that makes it a lot easier for us. And I'll come clear off and outside. This will be outside of our picture. Back here won't be showing, they'll be hidden by the other fur hood. Come back to the beginning. We have our selection. Let's make sure we're on that right layer. We are. And then let's go up here and we want layer, new layer via copy. There's now a copy of that hair layer right there. If I hide that, you can see there it is, just that hair piece right there. Okay, now that we have that shown and just this picture, we can work on matching this piece of hair to this hair on the left hand side. So for that, we'll use an adjustment layer. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and hue saturation, where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Choose that and choose OK. Now the reason why I'm using an adjustment layer is I can then always come back and change my adjustments if I need to, and you may want to do that. Just close that. I'm also going to show the top layer up here, so we only have this, this little bit right in here to worry about. Okay, so back to our adjustment layer. Double click on that, it brings the adjustments back up again. Now it's a bit too red, a bit too contrasty, a bit too much color in here, which is going to mean saturation. So I'll bring my saturation down and pull out some of that color. And that was much better already. Let me lighten it up just a, just a little bit, maybe not too much, just a hair, just like one is all I want. Just a little bit more lightness on that. And that looks like a pretty good match. It's in shadow over here, it's not in shadow here. Much better match than we had before. Here it is without and with. So it's a much, much better match now. We may need to fix our mask right down here and blend this hair into this hair. We'll take care of that a little bit later. Okay, that takes care of that. Let's now bring our face back in again. And we'll back out. And you can see here, the face is just far too bright. And it's a bit too contrasty as well, a bit too vibrant. So let's go ahead and fix those. We'll start off by darkening the face down. Come down to the face layer. Here it is. And again, a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and levels. Where it says use previous layer. Check that box. Choose OK. And now in here, we'll start off with the middle control. This is your mid-tones. Pull this to the right, and it's going to darken the face down. Now I'm going to be looking at the values around here and trying to find a range that looks like it's about right. This is a visual adjustment. It may not be perfect, just kind of a visual adjustment. That's why I darken the face down so it's not standing out. It looks like right around in here somewhere it looks pretty good. Now there's far too much color in her face. We'll close this, go back up to adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox right there, choose OK. And let's pull the saturation down and get rid of some of that color. Looks like right around in here, looks like a pretty good color match to the rest of the picture. Now you can always come back and compare with the other face. Let me show you the easy way to do that. I'll take the background layer down here, make a copy of this layer, just drag it up to the new layer button, right there, makes a copy, pull that on top of everything else. Okay, there's the original, hide that, there's our new face. So go back and forth, Looks like we're pretty good on the color. By doing that, I think I'm also going to be moving the face a little bit to the right. I'll just use my arrow key and tap it just a touch to the right, just like just like that, not much. Okay, so we fixed our hair color. We've got our position sizes good. We've adjusted the values, that looks good. Two little things to check now. The hair or the fur right in here from the top of the hood on that she's wearing and the fur from this hood. Let's check that boundary right in there. You see here's the edge of that original picture. It's right there, so let's double check that area. And also right down here, we fix the hair. We may need to want to pull this down just a little bit more here. So we'll take a look at those two spots. We'll start off down here. This is going to be probably hiding a little bit of this background image up here in our layer mask. That's right here. If I show and hide that, see there it is. That's that layer mask. Go to the layer mask side, double click on that. Let's zoom in. And I think we'll see that the hair is kind of chopped off right there. I want to fix that. Now, black is hiding this middle section, and white is showing this area. I want a little bit of black paint on the layer mask right in here to extend this right down into this. So here's our paintbrush. Set the colors to black in the foreground. Let's check the brush size. It's a bit large, maybe a little bit smaller than that, maybe about 30, 31. 
bit better. I'm just going to come right in here just a little bit like that. Just enough to extend that hair so it comes into the other hair and that should be fine. Okay, since we're this close in, let's go ahead and take a look at this top section. And that's right in here. What we have is the original fur up here. And then here is a little bit of fur from that girl's picture right there. If I hide this, you can see there's her fur hood and a little bit of fur is showing right in here. We need to blend this area right in there. So I'll bring that back up again. And the way you do that is you grab some of this stuff and then put it in right into here, just so it comes down to this area, kind of blends in this section. Now for that, let's make a new layer above this layer. There we go, a new blank layer. Go to the clone stamping tool over here. Make sure down here it says sample all layers. What that allows you to do is to stay on your new layer here and use the clone stamp to select, and it will select whatever is underneath. And we want you know, this stuff underneath from this picture here. So here's our clone stamp. Now to select this, we want to be taking stuff from right above and pulling it straight down as much as possible, and then from here over and here over to make it as smooth as possible. We may put in some more things just to do a real nice clean fit. So I'm going to go from up here. Maybe right down here, it's a bit subtle up here. I want it a bit more busy down here. You can see it gets busier. So I'm going to go from right in here. Hold the Alt key down. Notice how the cursor changes. Click at that point. Let go of the Alt key and then come down. You can see how it's pulling that color up here down in here. I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to paint in just a little bit until I get into where that hair is right there. Just a few taps. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'll pull a little bit of this over, just kind of blend in here. So again, hold the Alt key down, click, and pull that in just a little bit. Kind of pull that in. And I think we're actually pretty close at that point. It's a little bit rough right there still. So I'm going to go for a smaller brush. That'll give us tighter detail. Take a little bit of this in here and bring some of that in. Just some small, small details. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to confuse the eye a little bit. So it looks like it's natural. Okay, I think that is pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out to fit screen. And that looks good. Maybe it's a little bit soft right up in here. Looks a little odd. That's that section right there. I want a little bit more detail on this piece right here. Same thing back to our clone stamp tool. I'm going to bring my brush size up to 35, just a little bit larger. And I want a little bit of detail in here. I'll pull some detail from over here and just bring that in just a little bit, kind of sweep it up to match, match it, just hiding that light area we had. Okay, back out to fit screen. It's a bit of an artistic touch to get that just right. But there we go. I think we have that fixed. Let's now compare. Here's our before. Here's our new face placed in there and I think that works in very nicely. So pretty straightforward, the you know, process is pretty straightforward. The real problem comes in on those artistic adjustments, getting the right balance on the colors and making sure you don't have any uncomfortable overlaps that don't really work. So we're trying to hide the edges in here as much as we can so it looks like it's natural. But there you go, that's how you can swap faces inside of Photoshop Elements. And if you had fun with this video, make sure you hit that like button and you click on that share button as well. Both of those things help me show up better on YouTube and that makes it easier for me to be able to do more videos. So make sure you do those things that really helps out my channel a lot. Also, to really learn how to use a program, take a look at my complete training course and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Alright, and I'll see you next time.